This is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, December 7th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Today, we are talking about ChatGPT, a state-of-the-art conversational AI model developed by OpenAI. ChatGPT is capable of engaging in human-like conversations, providing answers to questions, and even generating original content. That little introduction was written by ChatGPT itself, after just a short prompt from me. The artificial intelligence chatbot is suddenly everywhere, reaching a million users on Monday, just a week after it was released, according to its maker OpenAI. OpenAI also created Dolly, an AI platform that creates images, including some award-winning images, based on users' prompts. And those aren't the only AI programs becoming internet sensations. But the popularity and sophistication of these programs also raises questions about how they could be used or misused. Joining us to dive into that is our personal tech reporter, Anne-Marie Alcantara. Hi, Anne-Marie. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Zoe. Thanks, as always, for having me. So let's start talking about ChatGPT. Can you just describe what it is for any listeners who haven't come across it yet? So first of all, ChatGPT is a tongue twister, as you can tell. (laughs) Very hard to say uh, really fast. But most importantly, it's a free AI chatbot. Really, you can ask it anything and everything. You can ask it, you know, basic questions that you would Google to even asking it to write a love song for you. Uh, And it'll spit out an answer and you'll get a different response every time you ask something. Okay, so for anyone who hasn't tried it out yet, can you tell us what, you know, some prompts people are putting in and the kind of answers that chat GPT is generating? Yes, so you can ask it really any type of question you want. As for example, we've asked it if unicorns exist and it said, you know, a very nice little answer that unicorns are a fictional character and most likely don't exist. Others have asked it, you know, really deep questions such as, you know, when will I die? And it'll tell you it can't answer for you because it just doesn't make those types of predictions. And other questions that people have asked also include very existential ones such as, you know, who am I? And the chatbot will respond and tell you it can't answer that for you and that only you can define yourself and who you are. So it can be deep. It can be funny. It can be serious. It can really be anything you want it to be. So those are some like really existential questions. What about some of the more creative prompts that people are putting in? Yeah, so the other day I asked the chatbot to write me an essay about quantum physics and Pokemon, two very unrelated topics. And the chatbot spit out a great essay about what quantum physics is, what Pokemon is, and how they actually relate to each other, even though one is rooted in reality and the other one's you know a fictional character. And so people have been asking it questions like that. People have try to get it to solve homework questions. Engineers who work in computer science have also tried to, you know, figure out problems and solutions that they've been having in their workday and finding responses to that as well. How is it coming up with these answers? So chat GPT was trained on massive amounts of data that the company has gathered from the internet and other sources through 2021. And as you can imagine, that's just, it's infinite. You know, what doesn't the internet have out there? Wikipedia alone has so much information, right? So it's kind of trained itself on that information and pulling from that to answer your questions. Are there limitations to these answers? There are some limitations. Like I described, sometimes it won't tell you a response because it can't or, you know, it's too existential. Some of the other limitations people have come across is that the chatbot will tell you information that isn't correct. And, you know, maybe you're a scholar and you know that for a fact. Let's talk a little more broadly about AI software because chat GPT isn't the only one that's taking off. What else is out there and what is behind all of its popularity? So some other interesting AI tools that have popped up include Lenza, which is this app that is at the top of the app store charts right now. And it sort of takes photos that you feed it and makes a beautiful artistic photo Some of it's like really space-like. Some of it feels like it's out of Middle Earth. Another one that went popular a few months ago was Dolly 2, which is a similar function to Lenza where it takes things you've written down, like podcaster in space recording a session, and it'll turn that into an image. 
And really what's driving all of this is that these AI tools are now being given to the public, given to the everyday person, and you don't need to have a degree in advanced, you know, artificial intelligence or computer science to know how to use them. You can just do exactly what we're describing, put in whatever prompt you want and see what the results are. I mean, if everybody has access to these, it does raise a lot of questions about how it could be used. I mean, difficulties, say, for for teachers, if students use these to write essays or, you know, even for people making a living for artists or, you know, journalists trying to write stories. Those concerns have definitely been raised with all of these types of products. And many AI experts that I've spoken to have said that we should view some of these tools not as a goodbye to those roles and professions, but more so as an enabler of enhancing your work. So if you have writer's block, you could type in a prompt and see what it tells you. And then maybe that'll, you know, get the juices flowing in your own brain. Um, Naturally, if you're a student, maybe it'll help you understand the question better and come to your own conclusions and answers. Of course, people will probably use it in ways they shouldn't. But we'll see how what, you know, guardrails end up being put in place to make sure that these things aren't abused in the ways that they definitely could be. All right. That's our personal tech reporter, Anne-Marie Alcantara. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.